Good Tuesday morning to you, church family. I hope you've had a, a good day so far. We're excited to be back with you for moments with the Master, and we're in the book of Daniel, uh, just uh, continuing right along. If you remember our last time together, last Thursday, we began Daniel chapter 6, which uh, is a very familiar passage of Scripture where Daniel, as an old man, encountered uh, a king's edict, and he faithfully stood, and because of that, he uh, was basically sentenced or punished by being sent uh, to a den of lions, and we know that God protected him, yep. that he came out, and we're going to spend just a little bit of time wrapping up Daniel chapter 6. We're going to begin our time in verse number 25 and finish out the chapter, and so if you got your copy of God's Word, uh, pick it up and turn with us there to Daniel 6, and we'll start reading in verse number 25. We're just going to take our time. Uh, this Bible study may be just a little bit shorter than, uh, than regularly, uh, but uh, it's just simply because we were able to get through as much as we were uh, last time. In the next chapter, chapter 7, there's some very interesting things that we're going to cover, and we will make sure we give that chapter adequate time as well. So, Daniel chapter 6, verse 25 says this, Then King Darius wrote unto all the people, nations, and languages, that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven yes. and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel pr prospered uh, in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. And so that wraps us up with, uh, with Daniel chapter 6. But let's talk about these last few verses. Now we know that Daniel 6 began with Darius making another decree. And that decree was basically... Uh, at the admonition of some of the leaders that really wanted Daniel out of the picture. And yeah. so he, they come to Darius and say, look, here's what you ought to do. Anybody that's not worshiping you ought to be cast into the den of lions. And he goes along with it. And uh, ultimately, Daniel is delivered after he is cast into the, the den of lions. And so now we see this same king mm -hmm. that previously had made an edict that was very egocentric and very, you know, uh, he, he was wanting himself to be worshipped. Right. Now he's coming and saying, look, uh, the God of Daniel needs to be feared. He needs to be praised. He needs to be worshipped because he was able to deliver Daniel out. Now I want to ask you this question as we go through this because I think a lot of people as they read this, they might think when they see this about Darius me a question? Yeah, you a question. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so I need to be ready to Yeah, you might want to answer this. <laughs> but the question I've got for you is, do you think this is a moment where Darius has a, a repentant heart, or is this more of just simply Darius acknowledging the events that have happened and, and making really a broad statement? Yeah, I think because of the swiftness of his decision, Yeah. not saying God can't, cause a swift decision to be made but I find a lot of times that people ride emotional roller coasters mm -hmm. in our walk with Christ and in and a true walk with Christ demands that there are seasons that we trust him still even if he's not showing us who he really is right. I hear Darius saying everybody needs to bow down the king of to the God of Daniel and I hear the three Hebrew boys have just said whether he delivers us or not, he's yeah. still God. Right. There's, a, there's a vast difference in the way those two statements may have come out of their mouths. Absolutely. You know, once uh, I think a lot of church movements are built on emotion. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I, I believe right now there are movements in America uh, built off music. Mm -hmm. You hear about their music, you don't hear about their preaching ministry. Right. Yeah. Um, because... People flock in, and, and when I say that, I, I know you can flip on the TV and find them really easy. They're yeah. selling music all over the place. They've got incredible musicians, and please understand, um, they're making 
as much money doing this yeah. as they are if they'd be in Nashville or somewhere. And a lot of people flock in, and, and music has a way of moving us emotionally. Sure. Uh, now, it's, it's great. God uses yeah. music. I, I believe we need to worship God through song. I'm just simply saying that you can get caught up in emotionalism. I believe Darius, me personally, there's a little bit of him being caught up in, my goodness, these lines didn't even touch Daniel. Right. There is something powerful about his God, yeah. but has he trusted in that God yeah. and him being the only God? They had such a propensity to follow multiple gods yeah. that maybe he just added Daniel's God to the list. Yeah, and I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And, and one reason in particular is because of the statement that he makes. Yeah. It would be one thing if Darius stood in front of this group of people and made this edict or, or this declaration that Daniel's God and now it is my God, mm -hmm. that would have been a little bit different. I think of like Psalm 23. When you read Psalm 23, uh, I, I can distinctly remember some great men of God that have preached that text. Yeah. And one of the key ways that they deliver that message is it says the Lord is my shepherd. The mm -hmm. only person that David could speak of a personal, intimate relationship with God was himself. Right. It's the person he looked at in the mirror every morning when he got That's up. A good point. And so here with Darius, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say my God. He literally says the God of Daniel. Yeah. And so I think uh, Pastor John is exactly right here. I think Darius is caught up in the emotionalism because we know that when he gave the edict to... Um, for people to worship him, and Daniel was found guilty worshiping God, mm -hmm. uh, the one true God, Darius was troubled yeah. by the result of his own edict, by his own words. Right. He was overwhelmed, so we know that there's always this emotional tie between Daniel and the rulers, and I think a lot of that is uh, they respected Daniel. They saw in Daniel uh, some traits and qualities and characteristics that, to be honest with you, I think some of them probably even wish they had them in themselves. Absolutely. But when they looked on, they didn't see that. And, and I think right here, Darius um, making this statement, I think, is an affirmation that he, he's just caught up in the emotionalism of the day. I don't think that he had a personal, intimate relationship with God. Uh, in contrast, I think when you go back and look at Nebuchadnezzar, and you and I have had that discussion a lot, yep. uh, I truly believe, as do you, that when we get to heaven, I think Nebuchadnezzar is going to be there. I think there's something that as right. we read through his story, it seems that Nebuchadnezzar had a change of heart. Yeah, when you, <laughs> you think about everything God had to reveal to him for him yeah. to have that heart. Absolutely. You know, Darius, we could be completely wrong, you know. Nobody knows sure. a man's heart until he climbs in there, and only God knows the human heart. But I do know that I, I just read a statement It's pretty good that Darius was convinced of God's power. He was convinced of the power of God and the God that Daniel worshipped. And I think about a lot of times statements people make and they say, you know, uh, they'll say a God. Uh, yeah. We hear Hollywood people talk about God uh, in such general terms. But we know the true and living God. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a big difference in knowing about God yeah. And knowing God Absolutely. in an intimate way like we, we've talked about right here. Today you can have a head full of knowledge of what the Bible says about God, but do you have a heart full of God? Amen. There, there's, there's the vast difference. And that always plays out and shows itself. I hope Darius truly believed. And when we, when we read <clears throat> in this text a little bit, Darius... Uh, was serious enough to, to write it to all the people, you yeah. know, send the letters out and, and uh, make a decree. And remember that a decree of, that they make, the Medes and the Persians can't make a broken. decree, it can't be broken. Yeah. That fr from this point forward, that you would worship the God of Daniel. Yeah. I hope that didn't turn into Daniel worship. Right. Uh, we got a lot of, enough of that going on in our world sure. today, preacher worship and uh, men worship, and unfortunately, uh, you know, as we studied the American gospel here in our Wednesday nights, you see a lot of men who think highly of themselves. Absolutely. Uh, we, we are nothing without God and apart from God, and 
he makes this degree that says in, in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble in fear before the God of Daniel. Yeah. Um, he is a powerful God, but he doesn't say before our God. Right. He said this that specific personal God, element. That, yeah. their, that personal element. Yeah. I think another thing that we see in these last few verses is a theme that runs really all the way through the book of Daniel, and it's when God's people stand up and do the right thing. In other words, they hold true to their convictions. There is a lost world that is looking on. Yeah. Uh, they're literally spectators of our lives, watching what we do and how we handle certain situations. Mm -hmm. And when we do the right thing, when we honor God with our life, when we are faithful to the teachings and the principles of Scripture, there, there is a lost world that is paying attention. Now, we've seen that with the three Hebrew boys. Right. We've seen that with Daniel now in a couple of instances. Right. And it's, it's a constant theme, really, in the book of Daniel that when God's people honor God's word, there is a lost world that literally has to wake up and at least acknowledge the fact. Now, Darius, like you said, Darius could not deny the fact that evidently Daniel's God was powerful yeah. because he had delivered him. And it gave Daniel an opportunity to literally step to the mic and say, Guys, listen, it is possible to know this God that I worship. Right. And I think it's really important to note that in the age in which we are living, in the last days of the last days, I think God, what God wants from us as His followers is to live our life in such a way that, that lost people see that we're genuine, that we're authentic. And I believe when we do that, God will give us an opportunity because those same lost people that are busy doing their own thing, mm -hmm. when they see us authentically working through struggles and you know, but still maintaining our testimony, right. I think their interest is at least peaked and perked, yeah. you know, and they're thinking, well, wait a minute, is, is there something really to this Jesus stuff? Yeah. And I think it gives us an opportunity really to, to uh, be a witness and a testimony for Jesus. Yeah, I think there's something to the word genuine and something that's synthetic, yes. that's, that's man-made. Absolutely. Uh, you know, there's all kind of food products out there right yeah, now that right. are not the real deal. They tell us you can eat a burger that's not real meat. <laughs> now, I'm not saying you, you may not like that. You may like that. My wife tells me all the time that um, about processed foods. Mm. Uh, there's a reason they last a long time because there's chemicals in them that cause them to last a long time. Uh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you think about that. But when you've had the, the real thing... Yeah. When you've experienced the real thing, when people really get saved, yeah. when they've experienced the genuine thing, then nothing else will satisfy yeah. you. Nothing else will take the place of that. And there's always a drive and a desire to have more and more of that. We want the real thing. And, you know, I think a lot of times we settle for imitation. Mm. And... And I look in here and I, I wonder, did Darius, did he know the genuine? Mm. Or he just felt like, hey, it's a wise move that this God's pretty powerful. So we want to have this God on our side. Uh, I make this decree. and he, But he says some pretty strong statements in sure. verse 26. Absolutely. He is the living God. Let me say, if Darius was a believer, this is great. If Darius was not a genuine believer, these are still right statements. Mm -hmm. He is the living God. And steadfast forever. You know, I, I think as we close out chapter 6, we need to be reminded of these. Mm -hmm. Our God's steadfast today, Mark. Mm -hmm. he's, he's as sure as he's ever been. We don't have to doubt that. And his kingdom cannot be destroyed. Right. It will not be destroyed. Uh, we can bank on that. And his dominion shall be even to the end. Mm -hmm. I can't help but uh, I get madder and madder. If I watch a minute or two of the news, I just get more upset. Right. And we have a we have a you know we have a real pull to get upset at man and what they're trying to establish. And I see now the cancel culture doing its best to cancel 
whatever they don't like. Right. Well, I can assure you today, Darius' words are flat out true. There's a kingdom that is being built and it has been being built for years and it's coming and we're going to be part of that kingdom and the cancel culture, there's nothing they can do about it. They, they won't succeed. Mm -hmm. This is an everlasting kingdom. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm just glad to be a part of that kingdom. Mm -hmm. You know, thank God somebody told me the truth. Have you thought about it today? What if, what if we were just living in the world, believing the lies? I think about how easily I could have been born to a Mormon family and believe that I'm absolutely right. Yeah. How easily I could have been talked into to being a, a Jehovah's Witness talked into Buddha, talked into Mohammed, uh, believing those lies, growing up in some country that they bow to statues. Mm. And, and it's, 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 it's not genuine. Right. It's, a, it's made up. Yep. But here we are today, and, and <clears throat> I just want to give testimony to the fact that what we have is real. The Bible is real. That's why people hate it, because there's power to it. There's power in the Word of God and the mm. truth of the Word of God. And Darius, whether he believed it or not, he realized there's power to this God. And we have the real thing, and we have the genuine thing. And I'm just so thankful, Mark, today that uh, I don't have to guess. I'm not, I'm not wondering, are we on the right side of it or not? Man, we're on the right side of it. Absolutely. We believe the truth of God's Word. Absolutely. And then we close out there with verse 28. It says, So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. I think it's really important to note that because of Daniel's obedience, and we've talked about this so many times, blessing followed his life. Yeah. Um, he prospered. He did. And, and to think about this, this is a young man. He's not really a young man anymore. <laughs> he's, in, he's in his mid-80s. Uh, of course, I'll probably say that that's young if I make it to 80. Uh, but um, he literally has reached a point where Think about what he's been through. He, he was taken captive from his family. He was led into captivity in Babylon. Right, he, has, he has now uh, been used by God in, in multiple king, king's reigns. All right? mm -hmm. And then all of this has taken place in a foreign culture. Yeah. With wickedness and, and, and idolatry running amok. Mm. And yet, here it is in these last verses, especially verse 28. God reminds us that he prospered. Mm. And I think it's important to remember that when we do what God has called us to do. Yeah. Um, now, we need to understand too here, this, this may not mean that Daniel was filthy rich. I'm sure he, he, he was, well, was taken well taken care, taken care of, of. But prosperous is, I hear where you're going. Yeah. We need to be careful with. It's a, it's, here's the thing. I think Daniel enjoyed the prosperity of being able to lay his head down each night, knowing that he was in the center of God's will, yeah. doing what God wanted him to do. Now, we don't deny the fact, I'm sure, like Pastor John said, that I'm sure he was well taken care of. But even more important than the money that he possessed was the peace in the depths of his heart that yeah. he possessed. Yeah. Knowing that I'm doing exactly what it is that God called me to do. And despite all the circumstances that I've been able to overcome in my life, at the hand of God, God has blessed in a tremendous way. Mm -hmm. And I've got a deep, settled peace that only God can give. Amen. And, and I hope and pray today... And I know no more than likely that you do have that deep settled peace. But maybe you know somebody that does not. And uh, today just take them to the Lord in prayer and ask God for opportunities for you to be able to speak to them again. Uh, our, our time is short. Yes. And uh, you may hear me use this illustration a few times in the continuance of the book of Daniel because we're going to get into more of the visions and the things that God revealed to Daniel. But I heard David Jeremiah the other day saying that if you took history and you saw the first advent in this hand and Jesus, he came, and the first advent of his coming as a babe in Bethlehem, and the second advent is his second coming is this hand. He said, now look at those two things in time. 
And he made a great point. He said, you know, Matthew 24 and a lot of the scriptures we read about the end times is talking about the second advent. Mm -hmm. It's not talking about the rapture of the church. That's going to happen suddenly, could happen today. Most of what Jesus talked about looking for the signs of the second advent. And we know this. We believe that the church is raptured and seven years of tribulation pour out on this earth. And then that second advent, the Lord comes back and we come back with him. That's the second advent. Mm -hmm. He said this, if we are seeing signs of the second advent, how close close must the rapture rapture be? That's good. And and so, you know, today, the the thing we need to lock down is that love and that personal relationship that we have with Jesus Christ and knowing that we're ready to go, knowing that he's our Savior and our Lord and, and understanding that prospering, does not necessarily mean uh, millions in the bank. We are prosperous today to be a saved child of God. Our Father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He's got us in the palm of his hands. He's going to see us as we sung here Sunday to the other side. He's brought us safe thus far, and and praise God for that. Well, we did say it'd be a little bit of a briefer uh, uh, Bible study today. We we just thought that was too good to try to pack in to... Yeah last week's study and um, so mark and i are going to continue in the study here we're going to cut this one off of tuesday and we'll come back together thursday and we'll start ch- studying daniel chapter 7 and we'll get in some of daniel's visions and we'll study those through uh, chapter 7 through chapter 12 but boy there's there's a lot there yes. and you know what there's some things that we <clears throat> may not know but we'll uncover everything that the Lord enlightens us with and uh, can't wait to study that with you. Hope you have a great Tuesday and Lord willing, we'll see you when we see you. Well, thanks for being with us in worship today. It is our heart's desire that through the word and through this worship service today, God has spoken to your heart and you desire to serve him and to worship him more than you ever have in your life. You know, if you've been watching today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, That is our greatest desire. If we can be a help to you, if we can uh, assist you in any way, please contact us at the information you see on the screen. We also want to thank those of you who watch us regularly. We greatly appreciate your prayer and support. Keep praying for us as we pray for you as we serve the Lord together.